their models may be too poor to actually uh, do a good job for us. We need to face the fact that some nonlinearity or curvilinearity could hit us. Well, this is pretty fantastic what I'm going to tell you here because it's not a problem. It's not a problem. What if I would be worried, and now I just have one x, but I'm speculating that the way this x is influencing y is not by a linear function, but potentially by a quadratic function. Well, we could do the statistical analysis corresponding to such a model by a multiple linear regression model, and I'm just making it explicit here, where I the second variable in my multiple linear regression, I use the squared value of the x. So low practically in R, I just make this the column of squared values and I include that in my MLR. And then I have a curvilinear regression model. So the MLR sort of uh, includes this possibility to us. Well, that's nice to see. Huh? Um, here are my... Here are my residuals that I looked at before. Here I do, I put the squared wind values into my data set, right? I, there are different ways to do it. I like this one because it makes it very explicit. I just square the wind and make a new variable. Look at that, I call it wind SQ. That's my name for the squared wind numbers, right? I just make it myself. Then I do the fit where I, and here we see how I can combine still having temperature, wind, and radiation, and then I've added a fourth one, the squared wind values. That's the fourth thing. So I get a beta to include this squared potential, squared relation, or curvature relation. Is there, a, is there actually? And then I could actually start the modeling. Now I, I'm doing a bit of, a, you could say, forward modeling approach again now. Uh, because I could then try the squared temperature, I could try the squared radiation. But then I'll do the analysis. And I will only, I will only uh, keep them if they're really needed. So I do a statistical analysis to try to support my visual uh, investigation from before. I'm not relying on my visual thing. Is it really a problem or not? It's difficult to see maybe on those plots. Um, the plots could give me some ideas if I have many, but still I could check. So let's look at what happens. Look at this. This is, uh, why don't we here just, that's not the one. Here it is where I check the wind, right? The one where I I check the squared wind effect now. Let's see what happens. Not much happens. What did I make? Any help among you smart guys? worked in the break. I hate when this happens. It happens rarely, but it happens to me sometimes. Here we hopefully have the results. Do we need the square of the wind? Is it important to model the ozone to include not only the wind as a linear relation, but also as a potential, I guess maybe the relation was like this, uh, when I remember the plot. 
Yes, we do, right? The squared wind term is important. It's significant. So we realize that we should extend the model like that to have a more reasonable model for the ozone. See this? Now we explain 72% of, that's the multiple now, the multiple R squared, that's the correlation between the predicted Ys and the original Ys now. That's the correlation it is. 72%. So it's a pretty, uh, before it was only 50 something percent, right? Now it's 72 percent. Good, we are moving forward. We need to do model validation, model control like that. 